All right, so I am now following my inspirations of these letterpress posters with their spot illustrations and their type. And I'm going to um, work on my poster, which I have saved now as a Simon 8. And I've merged as many of the coloring layers that I can while still keeping all the vector layers of the line work. It's kind of pretty without the, uh, the drop shadow. Anyway, this is the problem. We're going to have so many options. It's going to drive us nuts. Okay, anyway. Now I want to bring in the type, but I want to make sure there's enough space for it. So just like we did when I sketched out the text blocking, I'm going to go to the canvas size, and I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. It's already at 16 by 20. I'm going to go ahead and make it 30 by 40, the largest a print sheet can be for a standard four-color four print lithograph. This is what's called a full sheet. And when I do that, you can see that I have some, some layer residue, right? And to really see that clearly, I can go ahead and make my gray background fill complete. And I'm going to do that for all three of these background layers. So I can make sure I've cleaned up any coloring residue as I make it bigger, because I don't want that showing up on my poster. And this is bigger than I want, but I can always crop down. Right. So this is kind of cleaning up my workspace. Oh, and the background's already filled. Okay, great. So now I have to find the layer that it comes from. What's a quick way to find it? Go to the Move tool, have Auto Select Layer on, and just click on it. And then I see it's connected to this layer. That's an important layer. <laughs> so what do I do? I'm just going to take my lasso. Lasso around all of it. It's just from some of the composited color that I had brought in. Right? And then I have that little spot. And that's from a different layer. Sure enough, there it is. So I select that layer. Get rid of that. All right. So now I have a clean slate with black, white, and gray backgrounds behind it to bring in my EPS. Now first I'm going to bring in my combined text EPS and see if I can place it. Just like I designed it, right? That looks pretty good. And now I have black text and my color illustration, right? And I'm thinking, do I really need to bring them in individually and work with them? I don't know. I'm going to mark that as green. So that's my major text layer. But I'll turn it off for now, and I'll see the difference between uh, hand setting it. So I can bring in one and set that above, right? Maybe give it a little bit more space. This is the the freedom that splitting my my type into two different EPSs gives me. And then I can take in my second one, bring it in, give it a little bit more space. Right. And I can then fully control the distortion. So then I ask myself, okay, do I like that better? I'll put those together in a group. Or do I like this better? And now, with the option, this feels a little too tight. It just does. And so to fix that, I can use Command-T. This is a smart layer. It will perfectly render up. And I can just make it a little bit bigger, which gives more space. Now do I like that better, or do I like this better? And on and on, right? Typesetting is lots and lots of comparisons. The reason I do it on a gray background is because if it looks good on a gray background, it's going to look good on whatever background I choose. That's the, a way to see how versatile it is, the lights and the darks. And this is usually when I call my wife in and I make her just watch me be OCD. Say, which one's better, dear? This or this? This 
or this. And by asking her, I usually kind of know. And I'm going to say this one's better. <laughs> but to be really thorough, I'm going to try growing this one. This is the, the one that's split into two. Yeah, and I don't think that works as well as that. So however you decide how your text looks good, that's what you're going to do. I want you to mark your text vector with green so you don't accidentally erase it later. And now I need to figure out what size my poster is going to be. So what I'm going to do is use the crop tool. And I'm going to hold down shift and option. And then just think, OK, just like when we were matting our logos, what's a good amount of space around my image and text, right? And you can move it to the left or to the right. You have these handy third lines where you should try to line up your focal points for the best eye movement. But I squint and I kind of look, and that's a nice generic, you know, 30 by 40, 16 by 20. These are good kind of generic poster sizes. I might decide to squeeze it in a little bit you can hold that option and squeeze it in from both sides. And you just find the right shape. So that feels good. That feels like a concert poster. Then I hit return. That saves me some memory. I'm at 470 megabytes. And I've got a very basic poster, right? OK, now what I can do is I can turn off the backgrounds and just leave white and turn off everything except that type layer. Oh, there's something interesting there. Oh, that's an eye. I. I got it. <laughs> that's what happens when you merge layers. So I'm going to turn off everything except that black type, and I'm going to save that as a JPEG, because that's one of the things you're going to submit, right? Because you can't upload an EPS. So I'm going to call this my black type, but this is not my sketch. This is my finished black type as laid out in my sketch. And I'm going to save that just as a, a JPEG to the desktop. And because it's just black and white, it's not going to take much memory at all, but I want to make sure it's not more than five megabytes because it's still a high resolution file. Okay, now I'm ready to start playing with color. So there's a few ways to go about coloring. The ones I like, like most letterpress posters, the coloring is pretty straightforward. You just use one color ink for the lettering. And often it's kind of a red or it's a blue. And I kind of like that. So let's see if I can match that. In fact, I can open this inspiration up in Photoshop and then steal the color directly. Much like I did when I was doing digital coloring for my, underneath my um, line work for the spot illustration. So in order to see them side by side, I'm going to go to Window, Arrange, and do Two Up Vertical. And it's a little annoying when I do that, because what I want is to be selecting on my image and keep that to the left. So I'll do that again, window, arrange, two up vertical. And then I get to see the reference next to it. And now I can steal that color directly. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use the eyedropper and steal that kind of orangish red, that's sienna. And now I'm going to double click on my text layer. And I'm going to do a color overlay on my vector. And I'm going to choose that color. Now the beauty of letterpress hand printing, it kind of goes against the nature of digital, even though this print work is created. And you see how there's variations in the ink? So 
I'll, if I use the eyedropper, you'll see it. So sometimes it's darker red, sometimes it's lighter red. You can see on the, the color how it's kind of switching around. So I want to build those variations into this because as just one color digitally, this does not have that kind of variation. This is just super flat. So how can I build that variation? Well, very simply, I can add a gradient. So if I do a gradient overlay underneath and I use normal mode and I, I mean, this is a little weird, right? But it's kind of hippy dippy, kind of fun. I could try this gradient overlay and then put my color overlay over the top of it and then just take its opacity down a little bit, right? You can see how that, that variation will now come through. And I can even try different layer styles. But I think I'm, I'm trying to keep it pretty simple here. So just fairly normal. There we go. The other thing that you'll notice from my inspiration is that it's a little bit darker at the edge. And that's because a letterpress the ink has thickness and that, that thickness will cast a slight shadow or that the ink will pull at the edges of the shapes if it's a silk screen or if it's a letterpress, right? So what I can do is add that in the layer styles here with a treatment at the edge. And this is what's gonna be called an inner shadow or an inner glow. So let me zoom in so you can see, right? And I have full control of these settings. So I'm using an inner shadow. What I want it to do is darken, but maybe I don't want to darken with a black. Maybe I want to darken with one of these kind of reddish colors, but a little bit deeper, you know, like that. And then maybe I don't want it to be so, um, so large. You know, I just want to push it to the edge. This is like an interior drop shadow. And I can play with how broken it up it is. And I can play with how opaque it is. And I can play with the different layer styles. So overlay looks nice for it, kind of deepens it. Okay, so I'm liking that more. And notice I'm doing this without my spot illustration really showing. So I'm really just trying to pay attention to the type being satisfying. This overall variation, I could try things like satin. And use a color. And a blending mode, instead of multiply, we can try overlay. Let's see if that does anything. And satin basically gives it its own kind of gradient. And it brightens it up in a way I like, because I chose that color, right? So you see the, the version there. I'm keeping everything at a 90 degree angle. And then the last thing I can play with, well, I don't know if it's the last thing, but I can also play with an inner glow to kind of counteract that inner shadow and give it even more variation. And I think I want to make it a little noisy, but, but spread out quite a bit as well. All right. So all that's building to give me some pretty interesting color. And what I haven't done is messed with the outside of the type at all. So I've just messed with the interior of the type, right? And it looks good on black. It looks okay on gray. It's not, it doesn't have the graphic punch. And it looks good on white. So now I can add in my spot illustration colors. and my effects and my color overlays. 